What's going on everybody and welcome back to Bourbon of the Week. My name is Chris. I'm going to be your host for today and we are running out of bottles in my collection, believe it or not, that we haven't already reviewed. I don't like to review single barrels just because my barrel is going to be different than your barrel, but we are getting to that point where we need to go out and we need to buy some new bourbons, but we have a new one for you today. This is Atlantic Bourbon coming to you from Cape May, New Jersey, a local, kind of local for me pickup. I had a buddy pick this up for me while he was in Cape May and that's what we're going to do today, but everybody knows before we get started. Time for the traditional sip. Cheers, y'all. Not bad. So here we go. This is Atlantic Bourbon, or full name, Cornelius Mays Atlantic Bourbon. This is coming out of Cape May. This is Naughty Spirits. Great name for a company, by the way, spelled N-A-U-T-I. It does say on here, very fine, rare batch. That doesn't really mean too much for me because anybody can put that on their bottle. This is a straight bourbon whiskey, which does mean something to me, at least four years old, and it's 86 proof. We know a little bit about this bottle, but not too much. So let's talk about those points right now. So a couple of things we do know, we already mentioned 86 proof and four years old. A couple of things we don't know. We don't know an exact mash bill on this, but we do know it's made with corn, rye, and malted barley. The corn is grown right on their own farm. They have a 60 acre farm and distillery. So they do that locally. They also get the malted barley and the rye locally as well, not from their farm. There is something to be said about a bottle that's doing everything farm to glass. It is their own product. It's distilled by them. It's grown by them. It's fermented by them. It's aged by them. So I do like all of that. But at the end of the day, you still have to put good whiskey in the glass for me to give it a good score. You guys know the rules, price, taste, drinkability. We're going to start with drinkability on this. 86 proof. How hot does this sip? Cheers, y'all. So I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but a buddy actually picked this bottle up for me. I didn't pick it out myself. He didn't ask me if I wanted it. He just said, hey, I got you a present. Brought this bottle home from Cape May. Shout out, Ray. Appreciate you for that. This bottle is what I would call crushable. At 86 proof, I knew it wasn't going to be overwhelming when it came to the ethanol. But some of these local craft distilleries haven't really proofed out their ethanol too well. They put it at 86 or 90 proof and it drinks like 95 or 100. Or they put it all the way up at 112 and it drinks like gasoline. This did a very good job of proofing out that ethanol. 86, again, is pretty low, but at the same time, I get no ethanol kick on this at all. So when it comes to drinkability, let's take one more sip, then we'll give it a score. I'm going to give it like a 9.12 when it comes to drinkability on this. When it comes to a craft distillery, which I'm assuming that's what this is, they've done a fantastic job of getting the drinkability right on this. I've had plenty of good drinking bourbons from other craft distilleries that just for some reason always drink over their proof. This is even copper pot stilled, which we're gonna get into on taste on this. But knowing that factor, I can usually pick out a little bit more of the ethanol kick, a little bit more of the harshness knowing that. But this is fantastic. 9.12 is what we're gonna give this when it comes to drinkability. Let's get to taste next. And up next, we're gonna get into taste on this. And taste on this, I'm kind of torn because they aren't my favorite flavors when it comes to my particular palate. But at the same time, they're not bad by any means. I'm going to probably finish this glass right here because it's only 86 proof and I want to pour another one. But let's get some tasting notes for you guys. So the first thing that I notice off this glass is the finish, which is weird, right? You normally start with the beginning and then you get to the finish. But there is so much oak and tobacco on the end of this that it almost overwhelms the glass. I would assume being only four years old that they're doing some type of stave project with this. I've never gotten a bourbon that has this much oak, dryness, and tobacco off a four-year-old bourbon unless they're doing some type of stave project with it. It would be interesting to see if a craft distillery is doing a stave project like this. I know there's a bunch of bourbons out there that are trying to do different aging processes and speed it up and slow it down and all these different things. We just did the blackened where they put music in the aging process, which agitates the whiskey while it's in there. I assume they're doing something just with how much oak and tobacco is on this. Other than that, though, a lot of sweetness, no real rye spice, definitely heavy corn on this. If I Again, if I had to guess, it's in that high 70s to mid 80s when it comes to the corn on this and maybe like three to 5% rye and then the rest is malted barley, but I don't even get that much peanut as well. So this is a high rye, I'm sorry, this is a high corn content when it comes to this bottle right here. So again, I'm kind of up in the air on this one. It's not my favorite flavor profile, but at the same time, I don't want to knock it or give it a bad score just because it's not my personal preference. I think a lot of people would enjoy this. If you like a smoky, oaky, four-year-old bourbon, that's what you're going to get out of this. It's surprisingly smooth. It's very easy to sip. And it's something that I would definitely recommend having a cigar with or sitting outside by the fire with. I don't think this is like a summertime sipper, so maybe it shouldn't be deserved for that, even at 86 proof. But definitely something I could see myself sitting outside 
with a fire in the winter, smoking a cigar and drinking this Atlantic bourbon because again, not my favorite, but not that bad. Let's give it like a, I'm gonna give it an average score, like a 7.92 when it comes to taste on this. And last but certainly not least, we're gonna get into price on this and that's where this bottle is going to struggle. I actually had to call this company to make sure my buddy told me the right price. He likes to drink, he probably had a few cocktails, picked himself up a bottle of tequila, picked me up this bottle right here and this comes in at $90. Now this is just a 750 milliliter bottle of bourbon and I understand the whole farm to glass thing. These smaller companies have to make their money but at the same time, $90 seems a little bit outrageous. I think it's good. I think drinkability is fantastic. I think I would love to visit this 60 acre farm that they have. I think I love the story of everything that goes on with this. We're gonna talk a little bit more in the Bourbon Bomb of the Week about the name behind it. But at the same time, $90 is a very tough ask for a bottle of bourbon, especially something that maybe you're not drinking every day, right? I'm not daily drinking a 90 bottle of bourbon, $90 bottle of bourbon. So. Knowing everything I know about it, knowing everything I like about it, knowing everything I don't like about it, I'm going to give this a lower score when it comes to price on this. There's a lot of comparables out there for $90 that I would pick up before I pick up this bottle, but at the same time, they're a smaller distillery, so I understand what they're doing. Let's give this like a, I don't want to be disrespectful, but let's give this like a 5.12 when it comes to price on this. But let's send it over to this week's Bourbon Bomb of the Week and learn a little bit about Cornelius May. It's not going to be a long one. We'll just talk about it real quick. Cheers, y'all. So the nice thing about this week's Bourbon Bomb of the Week is they give me most of it right here on the bottle, so I'm going to read it to you. Just a few lines real quick. Cornelius May's Atlantic Bourbon, which is the full name of this, Naughty Spirits, exquisite straight bourbon whiskey, honors Kate May's namesake, Dutch Sea Captain Cornelius, Jacob Zoon, by the way, Jacob Z-O-O-N, May, M-E-Y. So obviously this is coming out of Kate May, Kate May being Cornelius, Jacob Zoon, May, but his name was spelled M-E-Y, but I guess you could also spell it M-A-Y. Basically, New Jersey was founded by Hudson, right? Henry, Henry Hudson. And then this gentleman from the Netherlands sailed on down and he found Cape May. And that's what they're using to namesake this particular bottle of bourbon, Atlantic wow. bourbon, Cornelius May's Atlantic bourbon. So we're going to keep it short and sweet when it comes to this week's bourbon bomb of the week. Let's get back to our score on this glass of whiskey right here. So this bottle came in at a 7.386 repeating. We'll call it 7.39. And I think, I think that's probably a little bit high, but I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. The drinkability is fantastic on this. The flavors are good, but that price point is just so hard to work with at $90. I can literally put together a budget bourbon bottle collection for a hundred bucks and get three or four different bottles that you can start your collection with. So for $90, I think it's a very tough ask especially for somebody if you're new to the bourbon world. Now, I don't think they're ripping you off. I don't think they're out there making millions of dollars off this product right here. But for a four-year-old whiskey that doesn't have much more to offer other than drinkability and a little bit of good flavors, I think $90 is a tough ask. All that being said, Naughty Spirits, I hope you don't hate me. I would love to try some of your other products. I'm sure their gins, their vodkas, everything else that they put out are fantastic. They've won a bunch of awards on other products. This just doesn't happen to be one of them right now. Hopefully, maybe they'll get some more years behind this and they can start to charge a little bit less on that price point and this bottle will fit right in on the rest of my collection. But listen, that's where I'm gonna leave you for today. Make sure you check me out on Instagram at Bourbon of the Week. If you wanna help support the channel out financially, check us out on Patreon, that link in the description below. Come chat with us 24 seven on Discord. Click that like, click that subscribe button. All the links I mentioned in the description below. Please don't drink and drive. Always drink responsibly and stay healthy, stay happy, stay drinking. Cheers, y'all. Smooth.